Welcome back. So this is going to be a Jenkins Curve in Bridgeport, Connecticut. This is what I'm modeling on the layout. There's the power plant. Had a baseball game tonight. Bridgeport Bluefish. So that's a nice uh, vantage point to uh, rail fan. And also get some ideas for the layout. The original towers are still here, obviously. Bridgeport Harbor. Again, the power plant. The track on Jenkins Curve is super elevated. Here comes another train. There is a speed restriction on the uh, on Jenkins curve. So we head back to the layout. I'll show you where I super elevated my track and how I did it. So let's head back to the layout. All right, welcome back to the layout. So this is going to be my Jenkins curve area of the layout. And I just want to talk quickly about uh, super elevation and how I did it. Uh, if you notice here, um, you're going to see some strip wood that is underneath one edge of the track and that is one eighth by a sixteenth uh, strip wood All right. you can get it at any uh, hobby shop or you can order online right. and what I do right at the beginning of the curve I start sanding down the, um, the actual strip wood so it gradually lifts the track up. And now you can see where it's actually a full piece of strip wood there. Um, I take about uh, a half of the thickness off and I gradually sand it. And I do that for, uh, for both ends, for both tracks rather. And the whole purpose of super elevation is to give the uh, give the effect that the train is leaning over to the side. Um, down in Bridgeport, if you're ever to ride uh, Metro North and go through Jenkins Curve, you'll feel the whole train leaning over to one side. It's actually pretty cool. Um, obviously, they, you need super elevation so when the train is going around a curve at a certain speed, it doesn't come off the track. Um, and the curves here in Bridgeport are part of my layout and also on the New Haven side of the layout are super elevated. Those are the only sections of the layout that has super elevation. So why don't we bring the, um, the train up and I can show you what I need. Take a peek. So if you look at the train, it's it's uh, sitting over, it's leaning over, it's a slight tilt. Let's see a little better there. So again, it adds a nice uh, 
realistic effect to the layout. Um, I try to match the prototype as much as I can, uh, but uh, gives a nice illusion that the uh, track is super elevated. Trim is leaning. So, um, recently I received a, a viewer comment on my uh, one of my harbor projects I did for uh, the Port of Miami. Uh, so let's head over to my Bridgeport Harbor so I can answer the question. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, when you're working with super elevation, uh, it's going to take some time to uh, perfect it. And what I recommend you do is um, to test it out. Um, if you're running six axle units on your layout, whether it's modern or uh, transition period, uh, I would recommend, highly recommend, uh, running your six axle units um, through your uh, super elevation to make sure you're not going to have any problems. Um, in my case, I, I run quite a bit of six axle units. Uh, I run the uh, Repeatal FL9s, so everything needs to be tested uh, when it comes to super elevation. Um, this right here um, has been tested. I go forwards and backwards uh, when I'm testing uh, the uh, the super elevation. So you want to make sure your train, um, when it goes into the super elevation, it eases up and you don't have any type of derailments. Normally your four axle units are fine when you're working with super elevation, but your six axle units will find every problem uh, when it comes to super elevation. So again, uh, test your work. Uh, make sure you're using a six axle unit to test it. Um, if you have an FL9, use that as well. So let's head over to the uh, harbor. All right, welcome back. We're at the uh, Bridgeport Harbor section of the layout. And uh, today I received a uh, subscriber comment on the Port of Miami build. And the person is basically building a smaller uh, harbor and wants to put a few ships on his uh, section. So I wanted to just to do a quick review of what I'm doing here, just to show um, that you can do a lot with a small area, a small space. Um, obviously we all can use probably a ton more space on our layouts and uh, but sometimes we have to work with what we have so if you look at the this section here the length uh, from the edge of the table all the way to the back is around 20 inches and at this widest point um, that's around 19 inches and then it, um, it tapers in also in addition to that and, and as you can see um, I do have four ships sitting in there um, this section here uh, is going to be represented by a building that will be uh, on a dock and the harbor continues down this section here which I have two more ships plus another pier and then I bumped it out with a uh, building so um, when you're making your harbor um, one of the things that you have to consider obviously is um, how big the harbor is going to be. Uh, you have to consider if you're going to be modeling low tide or high tide. You got to consider um, what type of seawalls you want to use. I'm going to do a, uh, a combination of cement and a stone. So if you look at um, this section here, it's going to be a, uh, a rock crusher, actually, from uh, Fine Scale Miniatures. So we're going to bring uh, cars in here, we'll bring stone, and then it's going to uh, deposit into a barge. I'm going to have another structure here, and I'll be able to put a couple boats here. So you can do a lot with a small area. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six ships. And again, I'm modeling transition. If you're modeling modern, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to do this. So again, it all depends on what you're modeling. I like to do a combination of buildings on the water and on land. So it makes it interesting. Um, there is quite a few ships uh, tucked away in this harbor. But I've seen some of the prototype pictures, uh, mostly on postcards. Uh, of the ships all tied together down in Bridgeport Harbor. So it is 
uh, based off a prototype. So it actually did occur. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, I do have some uh, new videos coming up. Uh, one of the videos um, is going to be uh, DC Trains Part 2. I do have a uh, layout tour of, of this layout, plus a special announcement about this layout. That's going to be uh, coming in the next couple weeks. I do have to do some uh, measuring before I make the, the announcement. Um, and now that summer is over, I'm going to be uh, working on the layout a lot more. So I'll probably do about, I don't know, probably about three videos a month at least, if not more. So I'm looking forward to uh, working on the layout again, getting some more uh, some more updates in. You're going to see a lot more updates on the Seaview Avenue project. So I have to um, get this area done uh, before November. That's my goal. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this quick video, this quick uh, layout update on Super Elevation. And also a quick update on harbors. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you at the next update.